day go by <laughs> without resolving it. There may be things that, that you should be angry about in your life, but in your relationships with the other, resolve them. Those who have been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. So he's saying there's there's some people in the church that are, that are taking things. He says, stop it. You need to go find some work to do so you can do something useful. So God can use you in the church to help someone else. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit, benefit those who listen. So he's saying, be careful what you say to somebody. Are you encouraging that person? Even if you're giving them a warning, it can be to build them up. Or are we like tearing people down? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So what does that mean? His Spirit wants us to encourage each other, build each other up. And when we knock each other down, his spirit grieves. He's saying, don't do that. Just get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because those are improper for the Lord's people. There should not be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking. <coughs> out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For this you can be, you know what, so when you're at work and somebody tells like a rude joke or a dirty joke and you, you laugh along, you are being the same as them in, their, in your thinking. So we have to be careful. So instead we should, we, should, we should have a mind that's grateful and thankful and not looking down on other people. Go on verse 5, for of this you can be sure no immoral, impure, or greedy person such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. <coughs> Therefore do not be partners with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, Find out what pleases the Lord. Okay, so here we're going to pause there again for a minute. Instead of living to please these five senses physically, live to please God and what He wants for us. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated, illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice our, our minds are different. Is the world thankful? Are they singing songs to God and worshiping Him? No. But in the church we should be. And when we go outside the church and we live in the world day to day, that mindset needs to continue the same. We're singing and we're thankful to God. 
Paul continues and he gives more instructions about the Christian home and families and husbands and wives. We're not going to we're not going to read all of that. We're going to stop here for today. Because we want to have enough time to receive communion this morning. So right now, look back on this last year, 2012, as we get ready to start a new year. Is there anything you need to repent and change and say, my thinking has matched the world instead of matching spiritual life? Or is there any kind of sin you say, Lord, I want to be forgiven of this morning before I receive you? Let's stand together.